Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to style the entire web application. So this is our application. If you're okay with this look, then you're done. You don't have to like really watch this video, but I do recommend you watch it through the end. So it is going to be an HTML practice, a CSS practice, and the application is going to the web application, the full stack web application is going to look a little bit better relatively better so first things first uh, now what the changes that I bring into this file I'm gonna bring this down we don't really need that the server I think is going to the server is still running so I'm, I'm not closing that I'm just gonna bring it down now the changes that I bring into this file this uh, home.html file there they don't have anything to do with Django they don't have anything to do with uh, with uh, database or any, anything else for that matter this is just front-end choices that I make to make sure the website looks cool so first off uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div with a class of content and I'm going to move all of this data within that div so I just moved all of the data is within the div with a class of content let me remove that space then I'm going to create another div that is going to have a class of welcome and I'm gonna move this ul this h2 along with the ul to that div there we go so this is the welcome and I'm gonna create another div with the class of links the reason that I'm changing these I'm providing them with containers with div elements a div element is a divisional element it divides certain pieces of the code HTML code the reason that I'm bringing them together and I'm providing them inside their own containers, like in this case, we have one element and two elements. Both of them have one container. So if I style this container or align this container, both of these elements, all the elements within that container will, will be affected. So instead of applying styles on individual elements, we provide them inside a container and then we align that container so all the elements within it will be aligned automatically. That is the whole idea behind containers. So far, we are done here. Now, the same way that Django expects a templates folder for templates, it also expects a static folder for static files like CSS, JavaScript, and images. So within this, uh, first off, I'm gonna create a static fo folder within the website. So I'm gonna say right-click folder static. It is also considered a best practice to have another folder uh, named uh, the same as the name of the application. So I'm gonna say website. And within the website, I'm going to create a new file, which is going to be our CSS file. And I'm going to call it home.css. So this is our CSS file. Now, before moving forward, I need to go within that website file. We have static, and then we have website. And I'm going to grab the image, uh, and I'm going to paste that image in here. So website, let me just grab the image. I do have a background image feel free to go ahead and change it so this is the background image now what do we want to do in these styles there are some styles which we have been doing a lot now before actually doing the style let's make sure that our HTML is linked to our CSS so I'm gonna say link type is going to be relationship is going to be style sheet but the address is going to be static slash website slash home.css this is going to be the address what do we want to do in here now there are some stuff which we have already done before a lot so i'm just going to breeze over them so margin is going to be zero for all elements padding is going to be zero box sizing is going to be border box let's grab the body element i'm going to change the font family to arial the height of the body is going to be 100 viewport height we have talked about this the background image is going to be url basically there is not going to be anything new in here so you can like fast forward as well i'm going to say home bg uh, the background size is going to be cover uh, background repeat i'm going to set it to no repeat a background position 
where is position I'm just gonna set it center and that's it the all the colors for um, this website the color of the text is going to be white and this is again alignment so I'm gonna say display flex all the items within this container are going to be flex items and they're gonna be uh, flexed so I'm gonna say flex direction I'm gonna change the direction the default direction is gonna be row I'm gonna change it to column and align items is going to act horizontally and I'm gonna set it to center so all the elements have to be centered horizontally let's reload the page let me just open up the inspect sometimes this happens that whenever you're reloading the page uh, nothing happens then just go ahead and open up uh, the developer tools and reload again okay it doesn't work so we have our home we have static home uh, relationship link just provide it down here let, let me just bring it down here refresh the page it doesn't work is the server running yeah otherwise we would have so I'm just gonna cl uh, uh, close the server I'm gonna run it again Python manage.py run server okay there we go server is running and here we go so I think there was a problem with the server so all the elements are aligned horizontally in this on the screen so now that we are done with that let's move on let's try to style our h1 so I'm gonna say h1 I'm gonna give it a font size of 60 pixels a font weight of okay font weight of 100 a margin all around on all four sides it's going to be 25 pixels as well as the text align center which it is so you don't really have to do it next up I'm going to grab the list items list items have a circular disk right to the left of them and if you say list style none it's going to remove that circular disk then let's grab our anchor elements I'm gonna say display inline block so just to make sure they accept margins I'm gonna say text decoration this is gonna remove the underline from the links the color of the link you for the links it's a little bit special that you have to specify the color uh, explicitly so for when the for the entire page when you say white it's not gonna be applied on the anchor elements as long as you uh, until you just specify it explicitly the font size is 20 pixel padding on our four sides not all four sides padding top is going to be 15 pixels and bottom is going to be 20 uh, top and bottom 15 pixels left and right 25 pixels let's save that let's take a look at our changes in here there we go so you can see everything is being changed but uh, if you click on it the functionality is uh, okay but the styling is still missing so I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna grab the content diff the diff with a class of content and I'm gonna give it a background color of RGBA uh, it's 48 47 47 point six five and this is going to provide a little bit of overlay on top of that image so the text has a better contrast and it is readable uh, padding why am I misspelling padding uh, 40 pixels on all sides uh, width is going to be fixed 800 pixels height is going to be 100 viewport height save that let's reload the page there we go you can see it's getting better and better now I'm gonna grab the welcome diff and I'm gonna say display flex and flex direction let's set it to column I'm gonna grab the meetings uh, hmm. do we have a meetings I think I've made a mistake here so this welcome is the bigger uh, container and then we have another diff that has a class of uh, meetings okay so this one this ul along with the h2 they're gonna go there but this links it is going to become within here 
So I'm going to explain it to you uh, so you understand it better. We have one big um, uh, container, which is dot .content, which, which has a class of content. Then we have another big container, which is the welcome. So I'm going to collapse everything so you really know. So this container, uh, div with a class of content, it has two elements. One is h1, the other one is this other div. Within this div, we have two more elements. One is a div with a class of meetings, the other one is div with a class of links. Within the div with a class of meetings, we have h2 and our ul. This is just for styling purposes. Again, just for styling purposes. And within the links, links we just have our links. I hope you're not getting confused. I'm sure you're not. It's simple. Just change the container style. In case you're wondering about this, that how do I know where should I provide containers? Um, well, I don't have any easy solution for you. It just it comes with practice. I know that's not good enough, but that's just how it is. So you need to create more and more uh, as many websites as you create. You're going to have this idea, like uh, like a idea that is going to be that an experience. A muscle memory that is going to tell you okay where you can provide containers and where you cannot provide it just comes from the uh, from experience margin bottom 25 pixels uh, I'm gonna grab the meetings uh, UL so we know that within the meetings class we have the UL let's just provide it with height height 350 pixels and I'm gonna say overflow auto the reason that I do overflow auto is uh, this is something that I did not show you, but I'm going to show you here. I should have probably shown you in the introduction. I did remember, but I said, okay, I had to add more content so I could show you. I'm going to show it to you here. So we have border one pixel uh, solid white. Padding all around 15 pixels. There we go. So that is the UL. If I were to save and reload, basically that is what I've done. Now, you can see this scroll bar right here. The reason that we, we have this scroll bar is because the number of meetings um, overflows the, um, the height of their container. What is their container? Their container is this UL. We see that all the meetings are contained with this, within this UL. All of them are allies that are contained within this UL. Now, there are two ways of going about this. The first way is not providing this scroll bar, and the scroll bar will be added to this page. And then if the user, that is not good user, user experience. Why? I'm going to tell you why. And if the user wants to add another meeting, and let's say there are 500 meetings, the user has to scroll down to the bottom of the page, then the user will have the option to add a new meeting. But in this case, the scroll bar is right here. So if I go ahead and if I try to add, let's just say I'm just trying to add dummy stuff. Uh, let's just say, let's grab that. And you can see. This is what, what the user is going to end up with. So scrolling the meetings, if there are 1,000, they are contained within this uh, frame, within this frame of the UL. You are never going to have to scroll the entire page, just this one section of the page. You might have seen something like this in some websites where they provide like tweets from the Twitter on left or the right side, and then they have like a little scroll bar that you can scroll to read the entire tweet, something like that. This is like a better management of space. I hope you have understood. If you, if I do not provide the scroll bar, this scroll bar is going to be on the right side of the screen, and then we will have to sc uh, scroll the entire page, and at some point, the rooms list, plan a new meeting, this title, all of them will disappear, and it is going to be hard to keep track of all the meetings. This is easier. See? This is easier. Let's go into the meetings, and I'm going to say uh, dot meeting. I'm going to speed up the process a little bit, just because we are 14 min minutes in, and we have just styled the first. We are not even done with the first one. For this one, I'm going to say position relative. I'm applying a, st a styling. I'm, I'm not going to go over it. Uh, I'm going to explain it, but not in depth like everything that I do. And CSS, we do have something that is called pseudo elements. I have not talked about them in my 
uh, CSS Essentials course because they tend to confuse a lot of people. Uh, we have a lot of pseudo elements. The common one are the after and the before. They're called pseudo elements because they resemble HTML elements, but they're not. They're fake HTML elements. And they they have to rec they have to have some sort of content, but for now we just provide it with zero. And I'm going to say position absolute. The relationship of position absolute and relative is whenever you say position absolute, the uh, any HTML element is going to have a default structure within the HTML page. If you say position absolute, it is going to float over or hover over that template. It's going to be taken out of its document flow. Then you need to provide it with a frame of reference. Where do you want that floating element to appear? We want it to appear right beneath this anchor element. So I'm going to say it should start at right of zero. From the right, it should be zero. The width has to be 100% of its container, its parent's width, which is the anchor element. The height of it is one pixel. The background color is going to be white the transform now this is really advanced css so i'm just going to go ahead and do it and i'm going to explain it um, not in that much detail so we have a transition as well i'm going to provide it a transition so it transitions smoothly so trans I always misspell that transform so we have talked about transform right we have talked about scales as well you have to keep in mind that by default, all HTML elements, they have a scale of one. If you decrease it from one, that HTML element will be decreased in size. If you increase it from one, it is going to be enlarged or expanded. We have talked about scale before. I say that this after element, by default, I want it to be a scale of zero. I don't want to see it. When the user hovers on the link, then there's going to be an underline. Then I want to see it. The transition is going to take 0 0.6 second and it's going to be a cubic bezier. It just it defines the behavior for that transition. That's all you need to know about it. Then I'm going to grab um, the hover state. The hover state, we have talked about it. It is when the user hovers over the link or mouses over the link. Uh, then what do we want to do? We want to say transform because we want to show the entire element, the entire after element, um, after pseudo element, we are going to say transform um, scale. So what is the default value? Default value is one. Let's save that. Let's come here, reload the page. So that is what I've actually done in here. Uh, I forgot to add a little bit more uh, in here. Uh, we need to provide a bottom position as well. So it starts from the bottom and I want it to be transition, uh, transform origin. I want it to start from left. This is these, most of these effects that really advanced CSS, like really advanced. So now if I reload the page, you can see it starts from the left. By default, all the transforms they have, they start from the middle. So if I comment this one out, trans transform origin, if I reload this, it is going to start from the middle, as you can see. I think this is this looks way better than that one. So I'm going to keep it at this. Let's move on. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to copy, paste some styles. We have some styles for the H2, some styles for the links container, and for the links themselves. Let's save that, and let's run this. There we go. So some styles for these links, and some styles for, the, for this H2. So now that we are done with the home page, let's um, move on to the next page. The next page that I'm going to style is going to be this details page. So I'm going to close these two and we need to create that static folder. So static. Within the static, I'm going to create the meetings. Uh, meetings. Okay. Okay, so in here I'm going to say detail.css. So this is going to belong to the detail. I'm going to cr create them one by one, but I'm going to provide the images all together. So here are the images these two and this one. Just copy those. If I go to meetings, static, meetings, just provide the images. So these are the images for. 
our web pages. Now, uh, I think we are going to change the structure of the HTML a little bit. We, again, it has nothing to do with Django. It is just for styling purposes. I'm going to create a div and I'm going to give it a class of uh, content. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to provide it there. Now, uh, we do have some elements which are called span. Span elements have their nature, they're in nature inline elements. So if you provide them within another element, nothing is going to change. The, their purpose is that whenever we provide some kind of data within that span, it means that we want to style that, that content differently. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it right here. So what we have done is we have said this meeting has been scheduled on meeting date at meeting start time and meeting room. The only thing different is that I've provided those within spans because and they have specific classes. The reason that I've done that is I want to style these spans differently. So the dynamic part is highlighted. That is the only the idea behind it. So let's save that. Let's come in here into details. We have done all of this way too much. We are basically resetting border and margin. We are providing some basic styling for the body. And we do have some basic styling for the H1 as well. So if I save that and if I refresh the... Oh, come on. Do I have to reload the server? Meeting one. So we are there. Oh, we did not provide the link. So I'm going to say a link. Uh, it's static. Static slash meetings slash detail.css. Save that. Reload the page. We don't get it. Let's go to home. Let's click on it again. Mm, let's close the server. Run the server again. Let's just click on it. Oh, there we go. Here it is. So for some reason, it's not working. I'm actually missing what it is. Anyway, I'm going to move on with our styles. In here, I have provided a background color. I did provide this one, but I think this one looks better. We have some padding, height, and width. Basic styling, the same styling that we did for the previous content. And I'm going to provide some styling for the paragraph font size, line height, margin bottom, for anchor tag, all of these we have talked about them before. Let's just refresh the page. There we go. Everything looks cool. Now, you can see that this part is dynamic data. This part is dynamic and this entire part is dynamic. But the user has no way of knowing which part is dynamic and which part isn't. Therefore, we are going to style the spans. So I'm, I'm saying that the font width should be bold and the background color, the color of the text should be different. So now when I reload the page, the dynamic content or the content which has to be emphasized, they are, uh, this is actually a UI design fundamental. It is called the Visual Hierarchy UI Design Fundamental. I've covered it in my CSS Grid, Flexbox, SAS and Animations Developer course. And this is uh, what, what it basically says is whenever the user takes a look at a web page, the user has to know immediately in less than one second what is the most important part of that web page. And when I reload, now the user first knows what is the me meeting title, then the user will know, okay, this, these information, they are the most important part. So this is also called the dynamic data that we are retrieving from our database. So for now, we have styled the meeting planner, the home page, as well as the detail page. Everything looks really cool. So I'm done with this one. Next up, I'm going to create uh, another file that is going to be for roomslist.css. There we go. And let's grab the rooms list. I'm going to change um, these um, HTML a little bit for this one as well. So we have a div with a class of, if you want to have a shortcut emit abbreviation, just do a dot. It's going to create a class. Content. 
mm, grab everything put it right oops cut it put it right here save it and mm, I am going to provide another div here as well just to separate the h1 from the dynamic data that we have so I'm going to say div with a class of rooms and let's grab all of these and let's provide it there so now that we are done with this one let's jump let's jump right into styling so in the styling we have all of the um, repetitions everything is repeated over and over again i don't feel like uh, wasting your time anymore so I'm just uh, going to copy paste and if there is anything new I'm going to tell you let's just refresh let's go to rooms list come on buddy let's add the link I'm not sure why even after I add the link it's not doing it so meetings slash uh, rooms underscore list dot css um, let's just close the server run it again refresh the page there we go so basically I'm styling it there are unlimited ways of styling any web page you can come up with your own uh, approach and you can just go with that this is my way okay we have four rooms uh, in the in the introduction I had uh, here we have three rooms in the introduction I had four rooms and I kind of forgotten what was the name of the fourth one. Uh, you, I may have to go back and check out the um, title for that. Now, another cool part about this CSS is that we have provided a, we have also provided a height and a, an overflow auto. So if the rooms become more than the height of this page, we are never going to lose this home button and this meetings. Uh, because the scroll bar is going to be is going to act the same way as it acts for the home page it is never going to go away and i just remember something that um in the meeting rooms so this is meeting rooms in the welcome.html in the home.html i just want to change uh, change the place of these two links so what i want to do is when i go to home let's go to home first I want to see plan a new meeting then rooms list there we go so I could go ahead and add another room let's just say add room and I'm gonna say uh, room three room four I'm just gonna add 10 10 save it add another room uh, this is gonna be room five I'm gonna say 11 11 this is just for demonstration purposes i'm trying to show you something room six is going to take a little bit of time 12 12. let's just do that let's just refresh the page okay i need like at least a couple of more a couple more let's go to django admin and let's say room seven it's going to be 14 14. i'm going to add one more just to stay on the safe side room eight rooms eight doesn't matter okay let's refresh the page here we go so in case there are more than there are more rooms than this ul can contain the height of 350 you're going to see a scroll bar here and if there are 1000 rooms the page itself is not going to have a scroll bar this ul is going to have a scroll bar so we never lose the title and the home button that's why I've added that now next up um, we are almost at the end just bear with me it's been 30 minutes I know I'm tired too we are here and we are going to uh, style the meeting and it's gonna it's not gonna take too long so let's just close all of these let's create the style sheet first it's gonna be form.css and forum.html uh, the HTML is going to be changed a little bit so div with a class of content everything is familiar right so let me bring everything as, as, as well as this form 
within the content and I think that is it that is it for the HTML we just need to add our link as well it is within the static folder the CSS then within the meetings folder and from there it is the forum dot CSS let's save that let me just close the server run it again just to make sure everything is working perfectly fine now again very very repetitive styling as when you take a look at it you know that it is repetitive styling um, there is something that I need to clarify as well here that we do have something called template inheritance uh, and Jinja inheritance in flask and template inheritance in Django which allows us to not repeat ourselves over and over again the reason that I did not include that uh, this topic of inheritance in flask and in Django is because it is it tends to become a little bit more advanced and I that is one reason the second reason is I wanted to provide repetitive styles for the sake of repetition for you I just wanted to make sure that you have enough repetitions and these projects that I create here I mean like as far as Django and Flask are concerned you need to dedicate like multiple courses to at least Django and to Flask or at least one like gigantic course with like a ton of data literally to grab everything that Django has to offer I mean we are barely scratching the surface and we are able to create amazing websites amazing full stack applications and uh, so what I, what I would do um, um, eventually in the future is to provide very very comprehensive courses on the topic of Django on the topic of flask because uh, like um, how should I put this um, explaining and covering Django within the Python course is well everything that Django offers within the Python courses well beyond the scope of the Python itself I mean this course is going to go beyond 150 hours if I were to explain everything there is about flask everything there is about Django we are just getting started and I will provide in in the future I'm not sure when but sometime in the future I will provide courses on flask and Django and those courses will will be comprehensive courses they're gonna have a ton of data a ton of projects and a ton of concepts and we're gonna talk about all that Django offers for the most part and what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just gonna provide I'm gonna copy paste the rest of the styling right here there is nothing major we're styling the buttons styling the label of the form styling the select statement styling the form itself the input and the select let's just save everything and run this then we end up with something cool right so everything is working correctly there we go if I do let's just create I'm gonna do um, Python uh, Django Django course I'm just gonna say Django course when I'm not sure when that is gonna be maybe like um, to be honest I'm not sure it is gonna be sometime in 2023 uh, like speaking from the top of my head Django course is gonna be sometime in 2023 and it is gonna take well beyond four hours it's gonna take like maybe 400 hours and I'm just gonna put it in the universal cabin let's just create it here is our Django course everything is in order here are our rooms here is if we want to create a new room this is the meeting info so with this uh, here is our Django administration we do have our database as well so if I refresh here are all of our rooms and here are all of our meetings everything is connected everything is together so we were able to create our second full stack multi-page application where we created the front stack with HTML and CSS the back end is created using Django and SQLite and combining all of those we now have a solid understanding and a solid idea 
of how a full stack application is created. What are, what are the different components? Now this application as opposed to the previous one which was the flask is different because in this application we have a real world database in the previous one we just had a a json file now in the next application which is going to be again a flask application is going to be a simple application small one but the whole idea is to leverage sql alchemy and that is basically what we are going to do in our next application, which is full stack web development with Flask. It is going to be a blogging app. It's going to be the same blogging app that we uh, we uh, covered in our SQL Essentials course. Topics, tasks, I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to expand that idea. So with this, our application comes to an end. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'm sure you have enjoyed it and I'm sure you have learned a ton from it. Um, see you in the next one. Thank you for coming this far and thank you for um, having the dedication that you have and I commend you on it and I do wish to see you in my next uh, section, in the next section, in the next application. So see you then.